white and wide, blood of Christ the crucified. From your hands, your feet, your side, Jesus, I trust in you. Greetings, saints. God bless you. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. We love you and we appreciate you and we've been praying for you. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we um, we thank you, Lord, for being our Lord, our Savior. Thank you that as Jeremiah chapter 3 says, we can call you my Father. Lord, we thank you so much for that relationship. Thank you for your kindness. We thank you so much, Lord, that we don't live under the old covenant. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you for grace, Lord. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for the outpouring of your Spirit to empower us to be what we could never be otherwise. Thank you that now it's not us, but Christ in us who does the work. And, Lord, you've just asked us to believe, repent, and believe. And, Lord, we thank you that you even grant us the grace to repent and the faith to believe. Thank you for grace, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for doing this work in us. Thank you for getting us ready for the plagues that are about to pass over this world, Lord, just like in the days in Egypt, Lord, when you preserved your people in Goshen. Thank you, Lord, for your grace to rise up in us, to bring to remembrance everything you've said to us, uh, to defend us against these judgments coming upon the world, Lord. Thank you for our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Help us, Lord, to eat all of the lamb so that we have a Passover of the judgments of the curse of this world. Thank you so much, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we've been looking at uh, Psalm 91 because there's a a pretty good um, vaccination there. In other words, God is preparing us to be to the judgments of this world by uh, filling us with His promises, renewing our minds with the Word of God, being transformed through the renewing of our mind. Praise be to God. And we've been kind of going slow here through Psalm 91. And uh, every once in a while I back up just a little bit. and So I'm going to start in verse 5 again. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid. And now down in verse 6. For the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Thou shalt not be afraid. For the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Something you can't see but you know is dangerous. You may see the signs of it around you. And, of course, the devil takes full advantage of that by coming against your mind. And not for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So something you can't see in the darkness and something that you can see. You know, some of our biggest problem is the things that we see. But we also worry about the things we can't see. You ever notice how that um, people, somebody may get sneezy or coffee around you and you're, the first thing the devil throws at you is, uh, you're going to catch it next, you know. <laughs> because, you, you know, what, what people die of is not the curse. I think that's one of the last things we were speaking about. People don't die of the curse. Jesus delivered us from the curse, Galatians 3 and 13. Exodus 12, we have a Passover lamb that we've eaten. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us that that, our lamb's been sacrificed, which is Jesus Christ. You know, uh, Psalm 103 and 3, uh, who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. We don't die of diseases, of plagues, of curses. We die of unbelief. We die of fear. The devil takes us out many times with a warfare against our mind. And so we need to learn, like Second Corinthians tells us, to cast down imaginations. 
and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So, you know, we're told the same thing in uh, Luke chapter 21. Let me read this to you. In verse 25, For there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations in perplexity for the roaring of the sea and for the billows. I mean, actually you can see the roaring of the sea and the billows representing the anger, anger of the nations against one another. You know, because the Bible tells us that the, in the book of Revelation that the waters represent the peoples, tribes, nations, and tongues. And so that's obviously making a lot of people fearful. You know, the things that uh, terrorism are exporting around the world and uh, so on and so forth. And men fainting for fear and for the expectation of things which are coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. I think the King James Version uses uh, men's hearts failing them for fear. But actually the numerics and the Greek um, fainting is a much better interpretation. Men fainting for fear and for expectation. What is this expectation? You know, it's um, believing in the curse. Believing that these things are all a threat to you. And thinking about, by your imaginations the terrible things that could happen to you because of these things. That's why it tells us to cast down imaginations, right? The devil prepares us to fail through our imaginations. Again, people aren't dying because of the curse. The Lord took care of that. They're dying because of unbelief and fear. And in every instance, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. If you're put in a place of threat, remember that the devil's army, his angels, they see in the spirit realm and they see in the physical realm too. They coordinate their attacks on you by things that you see with your eyes or you recognize around you or things you hear with your ears. They will pounce on you with this emotion of uh, fear or doubt or whatever timing it with the things that happen around you so that you're struck suddenly with this temptation to fear. And these imaginations in your mind about the things that could happen, you know, we we think in pictures. And the devil will take you over with those pictures. He will put fright, fear in you, just exactly like he's talking about right here. Perplexity, fainting for fear. He will attack you with these things. And uh, if you don't stop and uh, make war on him, he will just take you away. You'll be at the mercy of the judgments that are around you. We've seen from the scriptures very plainly, Galatians 3 and 13, that Jesus bore the whole curse upon himself, upon the cross. And that with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We need to profess uh, Psalm 91. We need to confess Psalm 91 in the midst of the trouble. Not while you're in church. (laughs) In the midst of the trouble. You know, when there's an opportunity for you to give the devil authority in this thing, to take you away. The gospel is the power of God to save the one that believes it. And faith without works is dead. If your actions are totally contrary to faith, the devil takes that as his authority. And Jesus told us what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So the devil is going to make war on the saints with the judgments that are coming upon the world. Did you know that those judgments are coming upon the world not to hurt the saints, but to deliver the saints? These judgments are going to separate the wheat from the tares. Okay, I just thinking about this earlier. I brought this um, revelation from Dmitri Dudeman. I want to share with you because it fits exactly what we're talking about here. 
this vision was given to Dimitri in May of 1993. He was in Oregon. And it describes our, our rights in Christ and how the blood is applied uh, through casting down fear and doubt and uh, speaking the promise, which is, of course, our sword of the Spirit, right? He said it was getting dark. Then suddenly it turned pitch black. It's interesting. We can look around us right now. We can see it getting dark. So many people are mentioning this to me now that they're seeing things they've never seen before. You know, they're seeing even Christians turn uh, towards darkness, you know, that uh, were lukewarm and um, and governments being taken over by the beast, obviously. Then suddenly it turned pitch black. It was as if the whole world had gone dark at that moment. And I think we're on the verge of that darkness coming, folks. It'll be great tribulation, and we need to be ready for it. We need to not waste our time. We need to be ready, prepared. We need to have our armor on, ready to go. He said all the people were in a frenzy. They became disoriented, and some were even screaming. Sounds exactly like the verse we just read in Luke 21, right? After some time, we heard the sound of an army approaching. Yeah, this is talking about the devil's army that's coming. You know, what is the devil's army? Well, he has uh, multitudes of demon spirits that make war on the saints. And not only that, they inhabit men who also physically, in the physical realm, make war on the saints. We call that the beast, right? And uh, soon we saw them coming out of the black mist. All were dressed in black except for one. That one seemed to be their leader. He was dressed in a red robe with a thick black belt over his waist. On his head, he had a sign. As I looked, I saw that in his hand, he held the same kind of sharp spear as everyone else in his army. I am Lucifer, he exclaimed. I am the king of this world. I've come to make war against the Christians. This war is about to start, friends. Darkness is covering the earth, and this war is about to start. It looked as though all the Christians were huddled together in one big group. Some began to cry when they heard this. Others began to tremble, while some just stood without saying anything. What is this already happening to these people? It's uh, Satan's warfare against them. They're crying, they're trembling, they're fearful because of the threat that they can see. What is the devil's army? You know, it's those spirits that attack your mind, like fear and doubt and grief and condemnation and lust and hatred and unforgiveness and on and on and on and on and on, you know. Rejection and addictions of different kinds and occultic things, you know, and thefts and lying and all these things, these spirits that attack. Everybody has a trial with these spirits making a war against them, seeking to bring them into their realm, you know. We've been delivered of this by Jesus Christ. All these promises that are given to us in the Word of God uh, are what we can use as our sword to set each other free, right? So, when they saw Satan's army... um, Coming in great force, many people trembled and were fearful, and some didn't do anything because they weren't moved by it. And Lucifer continued to speak. He said, All of those that want to fight against my army and think they can be victorious, go to the right. Well, obviously, that's where the sheep go, right on the right. But think about it. Are you convinced of that? Are you convinced that you can be victorious against Satan's army? If you're not, it's because you don't have enough of the Word of God in your mind to really do warfare with him. You know, we need to have that helmet of salvation on. The knowledge of the fact that we are protected, we are delivered, it is finished. Jesus has overcome the world. And the only thing left is for us to enter into those works like Hebrews 3 says, 
that were finished from the foundation of the world. We enter into those works through faith. You see, everything that Jesus did, the body of Christ is going to do. He had victory. He knew he could conquer Satan. Satan trembled before him because he knew who he was. He was a son of God. He is the only begotten son of God in whom we too are sons. You see. And, and Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. If you know who you are and you know what God says about you, the devil trembles before you. But he can convince a lot of people who justify themselves and are not really convinced of the word of God. So he says, all those that want to fight against my army and think they can be victorious, go to the right. And those that fear me, go to the left. My Lord Jesus